All right, let's talk about this Kodak, K-O-D-K. So the last two days, we've seen Kodak move from low of near eight, touch below eight, up towards uh, 1050. So two days ago, it broke out from at 8.30, um, and, uh, and finished up really strongly. So that was sort of day one of its breakout. And then uh, yesterday, it continued to go up as well, day two. And then today, you had a little bit of a, a little bit of a move to the ups on the open. But there was definitely resistance um, at 1050. And so when I think about momentum stocks, there are there there is a cycle to momentum stocks, and a, a typical they're not always the same, and each stock is different. But just a general a general trading cycle to be thinking about for momentum stocks is two days in, a little bit of strength on the open and then the weakness out. And so when I saw that Kodak was having trouble there at 1050 uh, and then 1040, uh, I was I was shorting. And then when it when it broke down, I mean, and there was definitely some confirmation. So we have we have uh, that move from 1050 uh, down to like 10.25, right there at 9.35-ish. Can you just, can you just point to that right there? Yep, like right there. And then can you just show the, the increase in volume relative to the other bars? So you have, you have a down move from 10.50, and you have a little bit of volume coming in. You've got resistance at 1050. You've got this thesis that today there's going to be momentum out. You've got this thesis that, hey, the stock really should go to four or six or whatever you, you're thinking about. And so you know you're wrong if this is holding above 1050, 1055. You, you know you're sort of wrong that, that that's the, the top for the day, that that's the resistance level to trade off of. And you're seeing confirmation at least a little bit with that move down from 1050 to 1030. And then it goes back up to 10, uh, 1040 and can't trade above 1040. And then has a flush down uh, to 1025 again. You see that red candle down there. Doesn't trade above VWAP. Has a hard move down again. Um, and then again, you see volume to the downside again, down to, to, to 10. Um, and you can see the down moves relative to the other volume, the down moves, there's more volume in the down moves as there is into the up moves. And so I think this 985 is, is a little bit of a level from the other day, but uh, we'll sort of see what happens here. But that was. That was what I was thinking about with Kodak. Any questions about that? And then I just go bring up the one day again. And so when it went down to that 985, I actually did cover some at 985, and then I put it back up at 1020 because that's where there was a lot of volume done, and it broke down from that last time to 10. So I put a little bit up at 1020, I put a little bit up at 1025. Uh, um, I was actually even willing to short up to 1040 if it was going to wick. And then what I do with those with those ads is that I just sort of make the spread. So it, when it failed and went all the way down to, to 985, it did go back up to 1020. It did get filled for a little bit. It did come back down to to 985. What I what I shorted up at 1020, I ended up covering some uh, 990 and 985 as well. Um, and then when I got covers at 85 cents, I put it back up again at 20 cents right away to see if that would happen. I didn't think I would, would get it, but 
I am making the spread from, from the position of weakness. I'm, I am following what's going on in the stock and trying to add on to what I'm making. You certainly could also use it as an opportunity to get a little bit bigger into 1020. You could you could use that as a position, an opportunity to increase your swing short. Um, I didn't I don't like those prices so much. I think you had your chances up there at 1040 for for the swing. Um, so I don't. But you, but you you know there's different ways to look at markets. So that yeah. How did you enter in the morning? Um, like around 9:40. Um, time-wise, when it couldn't hold above 1040, do you wait on the offer, or do you start getting aggressive, seeing that second sign of weakness on the day? It couldn't hold above 1050, and I had my thesis, and was up a little bit, just couldn't hold above 1050, and so I was able to short, uh, what I do is I put a dark pool order in, um, at, nine, at uh, 1045, so we, I put a lime dark pool, pool order in at 9.45, and it'll give me the midpoint um, to short it. Um, and I'll put some up at, at just uh, 50 cents. And I was able to get a little bit of 50 cents, and I was able to get, able to get a little bit hidden on the dark pools, so a midpoint dark pool. I didn't want to hit 45 cents. Um, I, I, didn't want to, I didn't want to miss getting short at least a little bit. Um, and then when it shows me the weakness, I, I put some up on the offer. So like when it failed for 40 cents, I put some up at 40 and 45 and try and weasel into a little bit more ever so slowly. So I kind of work the order. Um, and then every time it's like failing at 50 cents, I get a little bit, every time I sort of see it fail at 50 cents, I, I, I get a little bit bigger, feel a little bit more confident. Um, so I, I could have been wrong, but I, I, I felt like I, I wasn't, I felt like this was going to go down today, and I felt like uh, my game plan before the open, I should have said this before I walked out, but my game plan for the open was to find some resistance. I said this in some of the reviews to guys last night, that I was going to look for some, some weakness in Kodak on the open, an area that I can trade against and give it a shot. Um, I do kind of think, like, I do think this could go to nine today. So I thought that was a pretty good, I think that, I thought that was a pretty good risk reward for you know, five, ten cents worth of risk, maybe maybe a little bit more. Um, so we'll see. It's hard. I mean, it's not the easiest stock to trade at Jiggers. It, it's, uh, I was talking to Eli about this. It's just, it's just, it's funny the way it moves. It's a five cent stock, five cent spread stock, and it moves funny. So you got to kind of get used to that. You got to be careful about hitting bids. You, you, you really want to be trying to short this on the offers. And you want to cover this on the bed, and you will get it if you're patient. You don't have to. You, you will get it, particularly if stock's going to be weak. You're going to get it on the bid where you like. The fact that I got this at 985, you know, my first thought is like, wow, look at me getting these like really great covers. And then every fucking time that I, I something like that happens, what what happens inevitably? It's going to go lower. Like the reason why I'm getting those 985, I'm not suggesting it's definitely going lower, but there's a good chance that the reason why I'm getting 985 covers. It's because it's going lower later. To me, that's a sign. And so I'm like, I'm more likely to, when I went up to 1020, I was more likely to short it. I was actually surprised I got 1020. That's the part I'm, I'm surprised about. But like whenever you're sitting there, you're like, wow, I'm so good. Like I'm just covering the bottom. And I'm like, like that's the, you're not good. It's going lower. Okay. Or, or it's a signal that it's, it's potentially going low, lower. So that's that's how I and, and you wanna you, you need to start to learn how to use the dark pools. Um, so I use a, a line midpoint key, and if you don't know how to use them, then uh, ask Garrett or Ricky or Curtis um, or Boris, and they'll set you up with with, uh, with those hot keys. They're they're a big advantage. You, you don't want to be on the lit market. I think you trade exclusively on the lit market, right? Yeah. I don't trade on the lit market. Okay. I never get filled on the lit market. Okay. Other than, like, I'll get hit on the bid at 85 cents because it's going to go lower. But, like, I hide almost everything. Um, just the HFTs screw everything up. I'm always on the dark pools. 
not always, but I'm 80% of what I'm doing is on the dark boards. Um, so when I'm getting hit on the lit market, meaning like ARCA, EdgeX, uh, things like that, INET, I, I, I'm sort of giving, I'm, I'm sort of just taking off risk. I feel like I'm kind of, I'm willing to give it away at a price. Like I've, I've won, I'm locking in some profits. I don't need to fight for another five cents. Like, here you go, I'm locking in my profits. Like that's when I trade on the lit market. Um, all right, so that's that. And then this GNC, I thought, I mean, I, I you know, I, I know this is anecdotal, but like, I just, I, I can't. I, I can't, I don't get the GNC thing. Like yesterday I felt like it was up too much to, to me. And I just, watching the stock trade yesterday, I don't understand how it could trade above 460. Like to me, that's like, if you want to fit strong, like, and it wants to hang out at 460, like I get that. And I'm not making that up because it's around that price right now. I, I, I was saying that yesterday, like to me, that's where it should have been trading based on watching the order flow. That will take experience for you guys to sort of sort that all out. Um, but I sort of think everything above 460 just is not right. And so and I think there's a chance that we get the move below 460. And if we get the move below 460, I'm just going to exit my short and be done with it. Uh, maybe somewhere in the low 430s. But uh, to me, that's 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 about it for it. And so the other thing about GNC that I, I liked was how did it open up today? How did it open up today on the open? It was down on the open, right? It was down on the open. It did have one move up to the upside, but that move above above five isn't even above the high. The high for most of the open yesterday. Um, I remember having my stops at like five eleven. That was sort of like the new high above the first real big high in that stock yesterday. So that moved back up towards five, not even above that that point. And it got, you know, got all the way up to what, 530s or something like that yesterday. So, you know, a move from, show me the intraday chart again. You know, so a move from 480 up, up to five is, is not, when the stock is gapping down a little bit, is not something that uh, defines that it's, it's still negative on the day, it's still 35 cents negative on the day. Um, and I think when a stock is, is strong yesterday and you're trying to short it on day two, or at least trade a pull on trade, you, you're, you're going to, there's going to be some, there's going to be some up and down action to it. And you, you actually want to use the up action if you can to, uh, position yourself. So I, I just sort of felt like this was going to go down. Um, so I liked that it opened up down. And then you see that move up to five, goes up to five. And then how would you characterize that move up towards five? It just wasn't a good up move. And how did it move? You know, yesterday it moved pretty cleanly. And if this was going to follow through and go find six dollars today, you know, I think it would do it. It wouldn't open up down first of all as much as it did, and it would have got through five a little bit better. And then what happens after it fails? From, and, and I was watching the tape pretty carefully. It, it just couldn't get above ninety-eight cents. It just they were selling a, bu a bunch there. Um, so I started my short there. I, I, I saw the weakness there at ninety-eight cents, and I started my short there. And then how would you characterize that down move? hard, right? It goes, if it's hard, there's a volume in, increases there just before 940. Can you show me that down move? Oh, there's yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, you know, just gets, just goes down. So I put a swing trade on uh, there. I, I took a little bit of profits into 70 cents because it was just, it went down like 30 cents in a five dollar stock. And I was like, well, that's too much. I think I took off about half of it there. And then uh, to me, I wanted to reshort into 90 cents and stop myself out above the high. And so I put some up and I was lucky enough to get some up into that. And then I, I actually put my stop at 5.11 again, uh, using yesterday's stop. And it, it did get stopped out. And then I turned around. It should have, it should have stopped at 4. I think 4.90 would have been, 
it's more likely where it should have stopped. It was going to be, you know, I think that that was generally where it stops when you know, we found a day like today. You'd be lucky to get 89s. But I put, I literally put up uh, the shares that I took off at 70 cents. I just put that up uh, 84, 87, 89, and to, to get back into it, full stop above 511. Um, I, I do think 460, it should sort of give, give a fight. 460, 458, that, those are levels from yesterday. Um, you could argue I should cover a little bit more down here. Um, but, and I probably should. I probably should cover a little bit more down here now that I think about it. That, that, is, that is, 458 was definitely a level, and four, that 460 level was, was important too. So, should probably take off another half there. Um, when it uh, when it got below the low of 70 cents, I had an automatic sell stop in to short some more. Um, and then I had another automatic sell stop in at 79 cents uh, a little bit earlier in the day. 80 cents was kind of a level, and it finally got below there. I made this bend. Maybe I forget where. Maybe it was right there. But yeah, you know, it's the other one, like four, fifth, nine, fifty, yeah, right there. I had to stop in there, and it just sort of ended up getting some covering some. Um, at 480 was a little bit the level. So I think below 458 is probably pretty good. Um, so those are two of the things that I'm, I'm watching today. Um, and then the other thing to sort of talk about is it, it, it just doesn't seem like they're going to, it doesn't seem yet that there's information that they're going to be able to pass this continuing resolution to fund the, the government on a, on a short-term basis. I, I'm, I'm not hearing anything from that. And, and we were talking about this before the open, but to go to SPY, I mean, it just, they just don't care. They just don't care. Um, I, I would think, I think a thesis you could develop is if they really don't make any more progress towards the end of the day, you could see some risk off type of trading over the, into the weekend. Um, and IWM totally doesn't care. And IWM is trading like, you know, SPY is, is on the JV. I mean, they just take it, take it. It's almost like the government doesn't exist with this IWM. I mean, they just, they're just doing, they're just partying. They, <laughs> yeah, we'll go up a percent when the government may get shut down in a couple hours. Um, so, you know, you develop a thesis, but you got to have the price confirmation. Uh, one of the things that is good to look at is uh, for, for weakness that a lot of futures traders look at and Dr. Steenberger talks a lot about is dollar sign tick. So, you know, one of the indicators that ought to come up on the on the pretty negative side is you should, you should get some negative ticks. Um, below 800 is, is really weak for, for ticks. Uh, above 800 is really strong. Those are outliers. So if you aren't sure whether or not we're going to go up or down, but you think you may have some sort of market play into the close, you, you, you'd want to use this as an indicator. Um, so I have that up. Uh, I'll take a look at that. But yeah, I mean, and look, the, the counter to that is well, people shouldn't really care about what the I mean, the idea of the idea of the market should go down because there isn't going to be funding for the government. There's not going to be a continuing resolution uh, over the short term for the government is that that breeds uncertainty, that uncertainty is bad for the marketplace and that that tends to cause selling. That's your that's your case for why the market should go down. The, the, the uh, con to that or the uh, antagonist of that, the, the counter argument to that is, you know, probably the thing that, that is most important in this marketplace for it going up or down is what? You know, on a macro level, on a global macro level, what's, what's the most important thing? 
Yeah, interest rates. So uh, while the government may get shut down, the big global macro traders are most interested in whether or not interest rates are going to go up or they're going to go down. And so they, that's that. And the other thing is, just the thought process of they always figure it out by the end. You know, they never really do shut the government down. That's that's a counter to uh, what's going on right now. Um, all right. Thanks, everyone.